Recently on the channel, I made a review of the exceptional PS1 Digital, the HDMI 1080p direct from the motherboard PlayStation 1 modification. And during some gameplay captures, one thing that really stood out and that some of you picked up on was the amount of dithering that was on the PlayStation 1. Love it or hate it, it's absolutely everywhere. And the most noticeable example has to be Silent Hill. But back in the 90s, when we were playing our PlayStation 1s on our CRTs, we didn't even notice this, because on a CRT with a composite signal, the dithered pixels aren't really visible. Dithering, for those that may not be aware, is a technique to apply a pattern between two colors to create the illusion of a third color. This technique to simulate more colors has been around for as long as I can recall. Back in the 8-bit home computing micro days, the effect was very present on both the Sinclair ZX Spectrum and Commodore 64, especially noticeable in still images such as loading screens. The ZX Spectrum had a color palette of 8 colors and 8 tones, effectively 16 colors. The Commodore 64 had a 16 color palette as well and both systems utilized fixed color values. But it was also possible to simulate more shades on a system with only 4 colors. For example, the Nintendo Game Boy utilized four shades of grey. This dithering technique was used on the Game Boy to some effect. If we take a look at the game Race Driving, the dithering is utilized to simulate the effect of movement on the road. Without this dithering effect, the movement would be less convincing to the eye. By the late 80s, I owned a Commodore Amiga and dithering was used in many instances. The Amiga had a color palette of 4096 colors, but could only display 32 colors on screen in standard low res mode. High res mode was limited to just 16 colors. There was also the extra half bright mode that could utilize 64 colors on screen. Many 3D games on the Amiga would use dithering to shade polygons to give the illusion of depth or shadows, and sometimes just to give the illusion of more colors. The Amiga's custom chips could perform what was known as a copper fill, which could fill these vectors for almost no performance hit. The Amiga would also have many ports of games from the PC. LucasArts and Sierra Online Adventure games were reduced in colors from 256 to 32, and dithering would be used much of the time. Over in the UK, you would most likely be utilizing a 15 kHz monitor that would connect via RGB SCART. This means that the dithering would be quite noticeable in many instances. If you had a composite output connecting to your television, this effect would not be as noticeable. Dithering is a very effective technique with a limited color palette as we've already seen. By the time the Sony PlayStation released in 1994, it would utilize a 24-bit color palette or over 16 million colors. Yet the system has dithering applied to many, many games. The question is, Shouldn't there be plenty of color values present and no reason to dither at all? To answer this, first, let's take another look at some relevant hardware specifications of the Sony PS1. The PlayStation was designed for very fast 3D performance. The Geometry Transformation Engine was advertised to be able to calculate 500,000 polygons per second, while the GPU's peak performance would be 180,000 texture mapped or shaded polygons per second. In practice, however, this number would be lower. For example, Ridge Racer in 1994 used about 90,000 texture map polygons per second, but there was no question that the PlayStation 1's 3D was a game changer in the industry. The PlayStation would store these graphics in video RAM or VRAM. The PlayStation had one megabyte allocated for VRAM and would store its graphics as either 24-bit or 15-bit in depth. 24-bit color depth means 8 bits for red, 8 bits for green, and 8 bits for blue. This means a total combination of over 16 million color values. 15 bits would mean 5 bits for red, 5 bits for green, and 5 bits for blue. This meant over 32,000 unique color values would be available for this particular mode. So then why does it seem like the PlayStation 1 dithers almost every single game out there? First off, 24-bit direct mode was not practical for games and mostly limited to still images, so most games would utilize the 15-bit color depth. And in this mode, the PlayStation will store 24-bit textures, but display and render them as 15 bits. When reducing color depth in this fashion, it means that visible banding will become present. And if we use any paint program, load up a 24-bit texture, and then drop it to 15 bits in color depth, 
you will notice the visible bending that's occurred. So on the Sony PlayStation, dithering was used because 15 bits of color depth would not be enough to compensate for the banding. If we look at the color palette of all possible values of 15 bits and zoom in, you can see the noticeable banding between one color value and the next. The PlayStation's 15-bit direct mode means at maximum that there can only ever be up to 32,000 colors on screen at once. And what makes the PlayStation so unique is that it was not up to the programmer to develop a dithering algorithm in code. Rather, the PlayStation 1 comes with a specific rendering attribute in hardware that the GPU can utilize. For example, attributes such as vertex and color attributes, things like drawing areas that contain X and Y coordinates as well as texture coordinates. And as it happens, there is a specific attribute that can manage 24-bit to 15-bit dithering in all textured polygons. In other words, this was a specific hardware feature that was integrated into the Sony PlayStation 1's GPU rendering pipeline. We never really gave this too much thought back in the days of CRTs, especially with a composite video signal, because the dithering attribute was a rendering feature that would manage this for the programmer, and on a CRT, it would once again simulate more colors on screen. It's only when things like emulation, flat panel displays, and clean RGB outputs was when we really started to notice it. So the question is, if dithering is a hardware feature, would it not just be possible to disable it for all games? The answer is yes, it's absolutely possible. If we take any emulator and locate bit number nine of the GP stat control, and we disable the dithering, this will give us the result that we want. But keep in mind, this is per texture, so there is no magic bullet to disable dithering for the entire game. However, there have been some individuals who have come up with some worthy patches that you can apply to games to handle this for you. Notably, Chris Covell, who back in 2017 looked at ways to disable PlayStation 1 dithering in games. And what are the end results? Well, it varies from game to game. If we disable dithering in Silent Hill, for example, you can see the obvious banding in the game, and it doesn't look great. Even on the CRT with composite, it's still very noticeable and quite distracting. But on something like Ridge Racer, which seems to have a checkerboard dither pattern applied pretty much everywhere at random, it can provide a much cleaner look overall. And of course, it's possible for the programmer to just add dithering to textures themselves manually and not rely on the hardware. This would be useful for 2D textures, but there would be no way to disable this in hardware. The Sony PlayStation 3 was also capable of running PlayStation 1 titles with some enhancements. If we look at the image output here, there is a smoothing option that you could enable to smooth out the checkerboard dithering patterns. But essentially, all this is doing is applying a bilinear filter to the entire texture. So it's not doing anything specific to the dither patterns themselves. Sony PlayStation 1 emulation has been around for many years, and these days, things are quite mature. Under emulation, it's possible to set a 32-bit color depth and disable the dithering altogether, which sets a smooth color gradient between colors. It's also possible to up-res textures and make each PlayStation 1 game much sharper looking and cleaner than they ever were. But what about over on the Nintendo 64? Do we have dithering artifacts there as well? Yes, it's actually something that's also a part of many Nintendo 64 games. The difference here, however, is that the human eye tends to favor whatever stands out the most. And that's usually the lower res blurry textures and anti-aliasing. Some games, for example, like Star Fox 64, will have noticeable dithering artifacts as well. So to summarize, Sony knew that a 15-bit color depth would result in banding, and because CRT technology was widespread, utilizing a method to blend colors together would result in less banding and smoother gradients for the majority of users. It's only when switching to S-Video or RGB when these gradients would show dithering artifacting. Many people dislike the look, but for me, I love the dithering on the PlayStation 1. Just like the warping of textures, it's what makes the system so unique and unlike anything that ever existed. Without the dithering, as we saw, the results can be far worse. So it's a credit to Sony's engineers for providing a feature directly in the GPU hardware that would result in a lot of games looking so much better than they should have in the first place.
So there you have it guys, that is Dithering on the PlayStation 1. Now I want to hear your opinions and thoughts in the comments below. Do you like the Dithering on the PS1? Do you think it gives it that charm and uniqueness that makes the PlayStation what it is? Or do you dislike it and pretty much do anything you can to eliminate it via means of things like emulation or utilizing a composite signal into a CRT? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and I'm very interested to hear what you guys have to say on this one. Well, guys, that will do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, you know what to do. Leave me a thumbs up, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye for now.